Hello and welcome to Huskers HQ Overtime presented by Tom Dinsdale. I'm Jack Sheard. With me is Husker football expert Terry Douglas. And Terry, Nebraska won a Big 12 game on the road. Amazing. It is amazing. And they looked pretty good for most of the first half there uh, when they were holding on to the ball at least. Yeah, it is. Uh, you know, offensively, uh, they kind of continued on. We talked about last week whether this game plan of, of possessing the ball and, and, and eating up clock would continue. Obviously, that's what it is. And you talk to uh, Sean Watson, the offensive coordinator, after the game, and they kind of made a discovery uh, in the midst of getting drubbed against Missouri that uh, you know that a lot of people talked about running the football and and you know using this offensive line and bringing back old school power game. That's not this team. And so a after that loss to Missouri, they went back and said, "Hey, what works? What doesn't? Let's throw out what doesn't." and focus on what works. And, and that seems to be what you're seeing the last two weeks from the offense. A lot of a short, controlled passing game, a lot of times using the pass to set up the run. And I think they're pretty comfortable with that. The results the last couple of weeks, you'll probably see it a lot more this season. Nate Swift and Todd Peterson have been getting more receptions, it seems like, these last couple of games. It seems like Swift started off the game against Iowa State. Just every play they were calling his name. Right, a big day for Nate, especially early. He had one drive that was basically his drive, yeah. his drive alone. And and uh, you know, Coach Pelini and all the other coaches, they can't really say enough about Swift and Peterson and what they've done. Uh, you know, everybody knew coming in that these were going to be the the playmakers for Nebraska, the guys that Joe Gans was going to look to, and it's developed to exactly be the case. And and as much as Nebraska's throwing it around now, there's also plenty of room for guys like Menelik Holt and Niles Paul to get mm -hmm. in the act. So mm -hmm. uh, there's a lot of footballs being thrown around, and uh, you know, receivers. Are going to be making big plays, and Peterson and, and Swift will definitely be in the forefront. Of course, Peterson on the record watch now, approaching the, the Johnny Rock, Rogers record for receptions. Swift. Oh, did I say? Yeah, you said Peterson. 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 It's Peterson. okay. A little slanted towards he, the He's going to have to get guy. a few more receptions before the end of the right. season to, to right. get up there. Yes, yeah, Swift chasing the record. And, uh, you know, some schools, this popular offensive formation, some are calling it the Wildcat, where they the direct snap it. Nebraska calls it the Joker. The Joker. Okay. Uh, is there a difference? No. Okay. No difference. Okay, we'll I call think, the Joker because that's what. I mean, everybody probably has their own plays out of this. Uh, and the thing about Marlon Lucky is, uh, like uh, Darren McFadden down at uh, Arkansas last year when they had the mm -hmm. what was it the Wild Hog? Wild Hog. Wild yeah. Hog. Uh, Lucky, a guy, experienced thrower. I think he has three touchdown passes. So uh, I, I look for this thing to develop. Uh, I look for him to run maybe a little bit of a read option type thing with Quentin Castile and then off of that, a play action throw eventually from Marlon Lucky. We'll see what happens. Seems like that might be the thing that Watson saves for the Oklahoma game. It just Something tells me that if you're Bob Soups and you're watching this, just forget you heard that, okay? <laughs> I think Bob Snoops has probably got a good idea what's coming. Maybe he's already expecting uh, that? He probably knows what's coming. Well, there's probably somebody else down south of Nebraska that's uh, – maybe excited to come to Lincoln, that's this Robert Griffin fella. Right. He seems to have some talent behind the, the, the center there from Baylor. You know, Robert Griffin is a guy that, you know, you hate to put these kind of labels and expectations on people. The, one of the first few games that I remember seeing him play, I was like thinking, and, okay, this is Vince Young light. And, you know, obviously not have, doesn't have the offensive line or the people around him that mm -hmm. Vince Young did. But some of the plays you've seen him make, the way he uses his mobility, uh, you know, not only to, to make impressive runs, but also to buy extra time and make throws, uh, that's kind of what it reminds you of. And he, he's going to be a handful in Nebraska, for Nebraska to stop on Saturday. And uh, not only has he been great, uh, great in the running game, hasn't thrown an interception yet as a NCAA freshman quarterback. Record, isn't that right? right. Yeah, no and, interceptions so right. far. Right, and they, you know, they're not asking a lot of him. Uh, they're not asking him to make complicated reads. They're throwing a lot of short balls, a lot of things where he doesn't have to make complicated decisions, and he can take care of it. So they're doing a good job in Bra uh, Art Bryles' system of, of catering to this quarterback and what he does best. Nebraska hasn't exactly been forcing a lot of turnovers on defense and facing a quarterback who hasn't had any all season. Uh, maybe a tough task for, I want to say black shirts, but the Nebraska. Right, Lincoln. right, still working on that one. Yeah, I think they had a streak of 15 quarters without a turnover that they finally broke, uh, getting some turn. Uh, got two turnovers at Iowa State. So uh, that's something that po uh, Coach Pelini says they, they, he's, his defense have always hung their hats on, something they really want to uh, turn around and, and keep working on. Uh, i got a question for you about Tyler Wartman. We mentioned Todd Peterson. Uh, let's switch over to Tyler Wartman. He got some action this week. 
I, I noticed against the, the Cyclones. A couple of tackles and a pass breakup. Is he going to get some more action this week again? <laughs> you know, it's. I think that Baylor, just from initially what I see in the way the coaches are talking about it, and this doesn't seem to be an offense where Tyler probably is going to get a lot of play, you know, depending on mm -hmm. what they come out with. But uh, of all the teams that, that spread the field and spread the formation, sounds like Baylor spreads it as wide as anyone. So uh, this sounds like a lot of nickel, dime, Possibly dollar type coverage, uh, you know, for Not Nebraska. Not so much of the base that Tyler gets right. to play a lot in. Right, right. So I, I, I would think you're going to see a lot of defensive backs on the field again against the Bears. A lot of speed, hopefully. Well, they hope they're speedy. Yeah, we'll, yeah. we'll see that, about that's that. That's the idea. Well, Nebraska gets the win. They are four and three and one and two in the conference. And Missouri has now lost two games in a row since winning in Lincoln. Uh, Kansas. Two and one in the conference. Right. Um, you know, Kansas and Missouri are probably the two teams you have to watch out for the most, the favorites in the Big 12 North. But with so much going on, uh, Nebraska have a chance to win the Big 12 North still? Yeah, it's interesting. Uh, you know, 0 2 start in the league, worse since 1968 for Nebraska. Suddenly the Huskers win one game and they're in a log jam for second place. And, uh, you know, you could look and if you want to be optimistic and say, okay, if Nebraska can win out and get a little bit of help in form of another Missouri loss, I mean, you know, they'd have a shot right there. But obviously that tiebreaker against Missouri is a big thing. Plus Nebraska, plenty of work to do as far as beating Oklahoma and beating Kansas. Uh, Kansas comes in uh, to Lincoln. So. And Kansas State and Colorado. Right, right, so there's yeah. no gimmies. Yeah, this is definitely not. Baylor. A, right. Nebraska, definitely not a team, even though I think, you know, people feel like they've taken positive steps right now. Not a team that can just start looking down the line and, and rolling up Ws. It's it's definitely going to be a week-to-week -week thing for this, this group. But if they won the Big 12 North and they beat whoever they had to play. You're talking BCS and, and Bo's first year. Is that a little too optimistic right now? Maybe just a little four optimistic. And three, yeah, four and three. Because, because there's that three. South Division team that you have to beat in the Big 12 but championship. But Nebraska played so well against Texas Tech. I'm sure yeah. they can play with I, I don't know. I'm not so sure that Texas Tech isn't, like, maybe the of the four really good teams in, in the South. I'm thinking that they might be number four. We'll wait and see that all play out in the South. But uh, just my initial impression of, of seeing them up close, I, I don't know if they can match wits with those other teams. Which brings us back to Baylor, who's probably the fifth team there. Right. And you know, those top four teams are four of the top eight teams in the country. Baylor coming to Lincoln, how's that game going to finish? That's my prediction, prediction time. time. Sorry. Was that, was that a lead into prediction, prediction time. time? All right, if you went clear it up. Uh, you know, Baylor... You know, this doesn't matter to the tradition is that they have not played real well in Lincoln. Uh, but, you know, the kids that are coming in here, most of them probably haven't been to Lincoln. And unless you're a fifth year or sixth year guy who somehow was with the team before you haven't seen. Uh, you know, the thing I think that will keep Baylor in the game, I think that Baylor's defense is, is, is not that great. Maybe going to have a hard time stopping a Nebraska offense that's really confident right now. But uh, Robert Griffin and the, and the, uh, Baylor offense, I think, could cause some fits for Nebraska. So I'm looking for a, a close game for at least a halftime in Nebraska in the 35-21 range is what we're 35-21, and you're not predicting a BCS bid quite yet? Not quite yet, no. Not quite We'll leave yet. that to you. All right, well, we'll have to see how that prediction turns out, and we'll have to see how Nebraska does against Robert Griffin. For all that, make sure you stay tuned with the Independent.com and Huskers HQ. Thanks for joining us. We'll be back next week.